Welcome back to the channel and we're back with this little circuit that we found could run from about 33 millivolts and I wanted to explore it a bit more. Well one thing is a finding that if you recall a few videos back I did a video about an opto isolator that you can get from power supply, it's old PSUs from computers and such and it does a flashing. I'll show a bit of footage of that now. And what I said in that video was that Oh yeah, it's a great circuit, but it won't run below about 5 volts. And I thought, you know, it'd be really good to get that running from something a lot lower. Perhaps a regular AA or AAA battery. Well, it turns out, if I replace that resistor that's 22K with a 5.6 megs, so a lot higher, it actually has a similar effect. It flashes. I'll show that next. So here we are with a AAA battery. I'll connect it up. And show you what I mean. Here we are. It flashes just about the same as that one did, and we're only using a triple A. So it's just a rather neat little feature when you put a larger, much larger resistor into the circuit, and it brings it round more into the kind of blocking oscillator things. You know, you remember lid motors, penny, and circuits like that. But in this case, we're getting a decent flash instead. So here is the change to the circuit. Just very simply swap out the 22K for the 5.6 megs. And if that resistor is changed to a 1 meg, then the flash rate increases in speed. Just a nice little finding and sort of functionality for this circuit. In applications such as, you know, the aircraft flashing strobes and that kind of thing. Or a simple flashing light for a fake security camera, something like that. Now, one thing about traditional blocking oscillators is they can get very, very efficient. By just using a 100 UF capacitor, you can get the things to flash for about 30 seconds, somewhere like that. Now that's pretty good, and this circuit won't do that. That's something I want to improve upon. I think, and I believe, it's because I've only got five turns on the primary. I may make another one of these coils that's got a hundred and a hundred and see how that goes on with these FETs and see if we can start to match it, you know, inefficiencies of current as well as the low millivolt running that's a really big aim so to demonstrate where it's at at the moment that is a hundred UF capacitor and I'll connect it up and we'll see how long it lasts I imagine only a couple of seconds let's see so, I'll connect up the battery should see it start to flash I guess Alright, so now that 100 UF will be charged, there goes the battery, and we get basically nothing, which is very very different running compared to a regular blocking oscillator that uses say 2N2222A, or 3904. So while we know that's completely different running compared to a regular blocking oscillator uh, with a 1 meg resistor, and say a 224 or 104 ceramic capacitor I'll come back in a minute with another coil that will hopefully improve it alright that's the coil made, I've got some glue on it now, some white glue just to keep everything in place the next thing to do is to add these little extensions, 30 gauge wire, onto pieces of, well, old component legs really, such that it can go into a breadboard easily and firmly. And there we go, all done. Now, let's test it. So, how does it do? Well, let's connect up the battery. First thing is, it flashes a heck of a lot quicker. Now, if I release, with the other coil it just simply went off. Release. Yeah, it carries on for a little while. But not too brilliant, so the current usage is going to be a lot more than you know your regular NPN transistors. But it's definitely changed the running characteristics. It's very interesting. I will put the 5.6 meg resistor in now instead and see how that one does. There we go, I've replaced it. So, put the battery on. And let's see what happens here. Oh, it's, it's flashing much slower. There we are, a bit better focus. Okay, so it's flashing slower now. Release the battery. Oh, and it's carrying on. 
And <laughs> that was a weird effect. Wow, so it seemed to speed up and then go to a solid light and then off. I'll try that again. So, there we are with it running. Okay, release the battery. Very interesting. Now what I've done is to attach the circuit that I made in a previous video outputs millivolts to this modified circuit with its 100 turns on each side and the meter is showing 29.9 but there's no light now if I turn off this or the main one here <laughs> and I actually touch that connection you can see possibly the light is actually coming on but only when I touch it which seems to mean it needs extra grounding is it? something but we're showing there now 30.1 on the 200 millivolt scale now this is absolutely fascinating to me I'm going to try and put a piece of I don't know what I have aluminium foil something you see when I release it it goes out and that's the connection to what would be the well what is the gate of the uh, the MOSFETs so very very interesting stuff well this is quite interesting I put a grey wire there and that's before the resistor to the gate the pair of gates and then I was mucking about with pieces of foil and then I thought hang on a minute I do have a ground that goes directly outside well if we look at the light <laughs> it is actually on and the reading on the meter is 30.3 30.3 millivolts and that light is on so it doesn't make it portable does it but it's it is one way of getting this thing to run at an even lower voltage than the record which was 33 so there we are a pseudo new record of 30.3 millivolts and now you see there is an effect with this circuit in that whatever the draw is then the output from the millivolt circuit will change you know the the load of the circuit so now I've turned that pot the 1k pot right the way down 22.6 millivolts is showing that is very slightly on so the new pseudo record is actually 22.6 millivolts that is absolutely incredible. Now here's something to finish with. I do enjoy Kangsteri's comments and thank you very much for being a subscriber because he says 3 is the magic number. You can also use parallel LEDs to reduce the voltage drop. So 3 of the K117s? Well that's what I've done now. Somehow I've got 3 of these K117s in the circuit. So we'll see if they make a difference using three instead of two. I've also taken off the ground at the moment. I want to tidy that bit up and use the ground from outside properly. Okay, I've got rid of the little ball of aluminium foil. So it's now directly connected in from the outside. Um, well, the ground that runs to outside. And I've now put a one ohm resistor in line with the positive, taking the clip leads off to the meter and we can see 0.91, it's about 1 milliamp that it's using, which really stops this thing from running on its own, you know. But uh, there is the light on, and it uses about 1 milliamp. Now, next thing I'm going to do is to see what the millivolts are, and we'll end with that. Right, so now I've got the clip leads arranged onto the positive and the negative. The only thing different is the 1 ohm resistor, which shouldn't impact anything. So, with three K117s and the 100 plus 100 coil, we've got the light on, and we're using apparently 42.5 millivolts. Now, the thing is, this circuit does actually change a little, depending on what's attached to it. If it's unloaded, it's about 150 millivolts, something like that, down to about 60. But it does change depending on the load, and that's apparently quite normal. Do leave your thoughts below because this might be interesting we're going to start at 42 you can see that the 
pot is all the way around to the right. Check that it's on. Right, try and get everything in, in shot. Right. 42. Bring it round. There's the old record, just gone flying past. Are we still on? Yes, we are. 29.2 millivolts. We're on the 200 millivolt scale. If I take this all the way to the left, what in the world are we looking at there? That's physically as far as that pot will go. The light is very slightly on. 17.7 .7 millivolts.